In this video, I want to cover some of my highlights from Power BI's July 2021 feature update, including things like the updates that they made to the small multiples, some conditional formatting stuff, and also to the new visuals that they've added. All that and more, so without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. The first feature that I want to cover is the small multiples which is now generally available so it means it's not a preview feature anymore and it comes with two improvements. It's come with some improvements to its keyboard navigation and also screen reader support which is great for accessibility when it comes to using small multiples. You'll now also have the option to sort your small multiples so uh, you'll have a separate option that lets you uh, select how you want to sort it by and if you notice that they have this feature where you can highlight multiple columns or items in your sorting and I've seen this work for different types of charts as well not just small multiples. I don't know if that existed before but certainly it's a really handy one. The next thing is that they're adding conditional formatting to a lot more properties um, within your visual. So I'll leave a list somewhere here so you can see what's changed. And if you don't know what this is, this is the FX icon right next to uh, different properties of your visuals to kind of customize uh, and create some more dynamic values on them. If you want to see an example of how you can use conditional formatting to create some uh, dynamic results in your reports, I created a video recently where I highlighted the highest and lowest values in your bar chart. Um, using conditional formatting uh, and DAX. So if you want to see how that works, go check out that video. The next exciting thing that I want to cover is the Power Automate uh, visual is now available, generally available in Power BI Desktop. So if you remember, we covered this a couple of months back and for you to use this before, you had to go to uh, the app source to download it and import this visual um, in your reports. But now as part of the July 2021 update, the Power Automate visual will be there by default Default. So it means uh, more visibility and more people will be using it. If you don't know what Power Automate is yet, uh, basically it just lets you automate uh, tasks, repetitive tasks that you do on a regular basis. And it has a lot of use cases and cross workings with Power BI. And I covered it a lot in some of my more recent videos. Some of the things that it can do with Power BI is, for example, refreshing data sets refreshing data flows or adding data into your Power BI tables. Uh, and normally to set these up, you need to do it in the Power Automate uh, website, the Flow website, which is a separate site. You have to do it outside of Power BI. So essentially when setting up automations, you can set them up just in Power BI desktop without ever having to leave it to go to a different website. Sensitivity labels are now generally available in Power BI Desktop. Uh, I covered this already in one of my previous videos, but essentially it's a feature that allows you to set some labels to your data and reports to ensure that you're applying some organizational policies to protect your data. With this feature being generally available, it's come with three new improvements. One is the option to republish your data sets into Power BI service without overriding the current labels applied to them. Two is the ability to inherit sensitivity labels from Excel sources um, when importing it in Power BI datasets. So it means that your organizational policies will be inherited when you bring that data into Power BI um, if it was set up in Excel. Three is the ability to enable mandatory labelings of your datasets and reports in your Power BI service. So it means that your users, when they publish data or reports in Power BI service, they will be required to uh, label them uh, accordingly to make sure that you're uh, applying the right security permissions for all of your data. The new model view is generally available now. So if you were working with Power BI just a couple of months back, you must be getting this option to uh, upgrade your view, um, which upgrades your data set, data model view uh, into this new model view. But now this will be generally available. So it will uh, automatically just upgrade your views to this new model view. This new model view adds useful icons or header colors to help you manage uh, your Power BI data sets better. Streaming data flows is now available as a preview feature in Power BI. And this was actually announced back in April 
and this feature allows you to work with data in true real time. Streaming data flows is great because it gives you access to real time data, but it also helps democratize that streaming data, which uh, can be used by multiple report developers within your organization. And I remember back in April, it was announced as a Power BI premium feature. So you can test this out and see how it works if you have a Power BI premium license. Some new features added in the dataset hub. So now you can share datasets to teams directly from the hub with the click of a button. Um, you can also share the data sets as you normally would with the report. You can also now refresh and set scheduled refreshes um, within the dataset hub. The lineage view now supports goals. So you can see them uh, when you view your uh, workspaces in lineage view. There have been some new enhancements to the scanner APIs. These are the admin APIs that you can use to extract metadata from the Power BI service. And now with these APIs, you can get data sets, tables, columns, column measures and DAX expressions using this API. And if you're curious about admin APIs and how they work, I actually covered it in a separate video. And the video goes through the easy way of um, working with uh, admin APIs without having to go through all the technical hurdles. So if you're interested in admin APIs and how they work, check out that video. So now we'll move on to the two new custom visuals that I'm actually really excited to use. The first is the multi-info card. Um, it looks like it's a multi-row card, uh, the default visual in Power BI but better it looks like it has tons of customization features so I'm really excited to try out this one the second is the multiple spark lines this basically allows you to add charts uh, spark lines in your table cells and this custom visual is great if you want to show more insights in your Power BI report pages while keeping the number of visuals small and that's really it for my highlights for this month's uh, Power BI update as usual, it doesn't cover all the features that were announced, um, only the ones that I think was noteworthy. But if you want to read the full blog post, I will link it in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really enjoyed this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.